This ain't the intro, this the entree. It's Vash Lombardi. Welcome back. We have a new free agent acquisition, so that means you've acquired a new film session from Ha Ha Clinton Dix, uh, formerly of the uh, Chicago Bears, Green Bay Packers, watch the Redskins. He also played a little bit in Alabama, okay? And uh, we're going to break down a little bit of film today to see what we have. Now, at this point in the last video, I was breaking down Gerald McCoy versus Malik Collins. We're also going to do Ha Ha Clinton Dix versus Jeff Heath, but I'm going to do it at the end of the video because I think that conversation is going to be a little more lengthy and i would hate for your attention spans to be compromised here right so if y'all do want the extra analysis if you want the bonus footage then go down in the chat box and say hashtag bonus footage and hang around and wait for that and for those of you that just want the film i'm going to give you just the film let's run it for the cardio ha ha clinton Dix, right strong safety he's going to be follow my mouse he's going to be at the top right here he's uh, going to be at the strong spot and i want to show you this one play here right i got plenty I, I actually watched five games right but i want to show you this one play to kind of break down who he is and there are going to be different facets of this one play that are gonna you know help me summarize the uh the uh, player here let's take a look at how high clinton Diggs versus the run and uh we're gonna come back we're gonna talk about it a little bit he actually makes a pretty good play here but boy, I got a lot of analysis when it's time to get to the nitty gritty. How about this? I see a very high IQ player. I give him that off the rip. He sees things and he's very aggressive when he sees things. And he kind of takes these chances too, right? Um, but it's, it's not like he's gambling. You know, some of these uh, DBs, they'll they'll take chances and they'll gamble and they're, 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 they're guessing, so to speak. You don't want to guess at any of these safety spots. But he's aggressive and he takes these chances because he sees things coming, right? Let's pay attention to the box only right now. Um, so we'll see that it's, it's going to be a run to the left. And what we have is our defense flowing to the left. One or two things are going to happen. If you trust your front seven to make this play play side, then cool, right? They'll just make the play play side. But if there's a cutback, right? I think he just kind of felt this comeback because you see him coming downfield already right when the cutback happens. And if you have that in your brain as a strong safety, whether you're a deep, whether you're in the box or not, if you have it in your brain, hey, watch for the cutback. When the cutback happens, you're downfield in a hurry, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And that's what Ha Ha Clint Dix was right here, downfield quickly and fastly, right? But this is the one part that I got to also uh, bring to y'all's attention, man. As a tackler, Oh boy, I know a lot of y'all was in the Hate Jeff Heath fan club. Y'all love to throw that word tackling out. Um, ha Ha Clint Dix will hit y'all with a lot of these weird tackles. Now, his tackle numbers over the, over the years have been relatively high. I'll give him that. He gets his tackles, but that don't mean that they cute when he get them. <laughs> his tackles ain't the cutest, but um, they are, in fact, tackles. Okay, let's show a few more examples. See, we got this outside zone sweep play that the Eagles are going to run. Uh, ha ha, Clint Dix is at the bottom of your screen. We're going to see him make reads. We're going to see him get away from blocks, navigate through traffic, get to the outside, kind of set the edge a little bit and make a weird tackle. <laughs> but he made it, though. Don't let me don't let me be a hater right here. He made it. He got downfield. He he got around Nelson Aguilar's block really nastily. What are you doing? Like why Nelson? Y'all see Nelson Aguilar trying to tackle? Ha <laughs> ha, Clinton Dick. Look, cha cha, real smooth. Come on, son. Then he's just gonna weirdly make the tackle. Now, will this be a problem? Of course, you know weird tackles lead to bad tackles or missed tackles. So, um, you know it's only a problem if it is a problem. If that makes sense. Um, but if that's his way of making weird tackles, hey man, you know just just, just come on, son. And then you being the strong safety that should also go into account when we uh when we consider these weird tackles now he's not all weird tackles he has some pretty good wrap up tackles he does wrap up for the most part but he does i can make a highlight tape of weird tackles if y'all ask me to Listen, man, I know I'm making fun of his tackling, but, you know, you won't get any any gripes from me when it comes to, you know, like willingness to to tackle or just being in the right place at the right time, coming downhill quick, fast and hurry. You'll get no gripes from me there. Right. Even on this play, he's just kind of going to. But he got there, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, even if it's a situation where he's going to get there and, you know, kind of wrap up and wait for somebody else to get there, then that's cool. But um, I just wanted to bring it to y'all attention that that is something that exists. I want to show you another example of reading, diagnosing, aggressively getting downhill and making a play. All right. We got hilarious Clint Dix right here. Let's take a look at him. We're going to run the play, snap of the ball, 
Boom. And we're going to read it, read it, get downhill, make a play. Now, why is this so important? Well, because, you know, Debo Samuel's kind of crafting a new lane for these quick game yak guys now, right? You know, where we get you to pass is, um, you know, just quickly, whether it be slants, bubbles, hitches, um, just sweep screens or whatever, right? Just getting the ball in your hands quick and letting you be yak guy. So you're going to need DBs that can read and diagnose things quickly um, to get on to you before you get a rolling start and, um, you know, get extra first down yardages or whatever right so you need some, you need you need high iq dbs to see things and to get there quickly and to not be one step behind i will say this about jeff heath jeff heath is always going to be the goat to me but it seems like jeff heath was always one step behind you know what i mean so if we can just get one step closer to you know making plays stopping plays you know making tackles or whatever what the weird tackles <laughs> we got another one <laughs> Yeah, another weird tackle, right? Um, weird, weird tackles or not, but as long as we're making those tackles one step sooner than we did, I think we get better on defense. And it's going to be the same thing on this play. We got hysterical Clinton Dix is going to be the deep safety here. He's going to read it, diagnose it, get downhill quickly. Weird tackle. But those are the type of tackles that you're going to make in 2020 in the National Football League. So he did get two interceptions last year, and those were against his former team, Washington. And it's, it's funny because Gerald McCoy had most of his sacks versus his former team in Tampa Bay. So we got two guys that kind of turn up on their former team. Uh, but it's another uh, just another example of him just reading things, kind of being in the right place at the right time. Um, biting on the football, being aggressive again, and making a play, right? But he's not, he, he wouldn't be in the right place at the right time if he didn't make this decision, if he didn't bite on this play right here. We, uh, we're looking at the third receiver here. One, two, three. Right. We're looking at the third receiver here. And Clinton is basically going to bite down on this thing before it turns in, into a full on break. It could be a double move, but who cares? Like I said earlier, we're going to take some chances to try to make some plays to try to bat some passes down. Right. And it just happens that we got to overthrow. And look, if we playing against a bad quarterback, overthrows happen all the time. So you might want to be in the right place at the right time when these overthrows happen. And I tell you what, since I like to laugh and giggle at NFC East teams that ain't the Dallas Cowboys, we're going to watch a whole nother interception play. <laughs> now, this interception was a little different than the first one, right? This interception was, was more so, hey, I'm still deep safety, right? But this isn't a right place at the right time kind of deal. This is I'm using more range to make the play. Now, you're not going to see hilarious Clinton Dix make too, too many range plays, okay? You're not going to see it all the time like these free safety type plays. You're not going to see it too much, but he does have some ability to do it. Um, not because he has super speed or range or anything, but half of range is, you know, know the um having the ability to see it right to see it and anticipate it and we know that he is a seeing anticipating defensive back so um with him having that ability that'll give him an opportunity to make some more plays and hopefully as a defense we can get some more turnovers even though we just let go of the dude that had the most turnovers on our team and let's get into our bonus round here. Let's take a look at some of these numbers. First of all, I hate numbers. Um, I hate comparing numbers or whatever, but a lot of people like to compare numbers. And also, you know, sometimes you can look at numbers as a, as a, just some bonus information just to, you know, you know, get wind of a storyline that you probably didn't, didn't have at first. So uh, we're going to, we're going to take a look at some numbers, man. I will say that on the film, on the film, laugh out loud, Clinton Dix is a better player than Jeff Heath. OK, just on the film. Uh, and, and I would say that the numbers suggest that, too. But, um, you know, there 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 are some places to where they're really similar to where they're they're similar type of players to where hey cowboy fans hate Jeff Heath for his tackling. Vach hates, you know, ha ha Clint Dix for his tackling. Right. Um, you know, Clint Dix is going to have more tackles because of his football intelligence, his IQ, him seeing things. Right. He's going to have more tackles. But and I thought he was he was going to blow Jeff Heath out the water in the tackle department. And some years he did. Um, but they were, you know, they were pretty steady, man. Jeff, you know, Jeff had more tackles than I thought he did. So, ooh, excuse me. So, um, let's see. Ha ha Clinton Dix had, let's see. So last year he had 78 tackles, right? 78 tackles, five pass deflections and two interceptions. Even though those two interceptions came, um, from, you know, from the, from the Washington game, he did have them. Jeff Heath only played 13 games last year. Forgot he did that. He only played 13 games. So that's where that 63 comes from. But I was still surprised that he had seven pass deflections last year. Now I always knew Jeff Heath was better in coverage than Cowboy fans gave him credit for. Um, but he did get those 
seven pass deflections. Zero interceptions, though, but he did get, get his hands on the football there. And, of course, we had the 85 tackle season from uh, from uh, Jeff Heath, five and five. So he's been pretty consistent. I think Jeff Heath was – I think he kind of bottomed out to as good as he was going to get. You know what I mean? I think his uh, I think he had reached his ceiling in terms of what he was going to turn into as a player. I know pe- there are plenty of people that hated on him, and Jeff Heath will always be a goat in my mind. But I think he was a very serviceable player. Um, what I think Ha Ha Clint Dix brings you is that he's going to bring you more tackles. He's going to bring you some more plays on the football, and he will, and he consistently did that, right? Consistently. Um, but what what I did notice though, right? Um, about the numbers, I kind of wanted to know where this where this this drop off came from, so to speak. Um, so we take a look at these first two Green Bay years, these freshman and sophomore Green Bay years. Ninety two tackles, one hundred tackles. Those are crazy numbers. Six pass deflections, interception here, two interceptions there. I get that. Um, and then in this season here, this this two thousand eighteen season, um, he played seven games in Green Bay and nine games in Washington. Right. Forgot he did that, but it did happen. Um, 66 plus 27 tackles. That's like 93 tackles. Right. So he got 93 tackles here. Six pass deflections, right? Three interceptions. So I want to know is how do we go from 92, 100, skip a little bit here, then we get back up to 90 something, right? How do we get from there to 78 tackles, right? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing... So we we have to decide is it that the Bears played him in a different, you know, type of way? Was it circumstances? Was it that he had less tackles because it was so many gangsters around him that he just had less tackles or did he fall off, right? I'm not really sure. So when he gets to Dallas, we got to, you know, we got to kind of look at it and see, you know, what the vibes are going to be, right? Is he going to be the early haha Clint Dix that we can count on to get 100 tackles and all because if if he's that guy, and that's kind of what I like about his contract too. It's a what's a what two year contract, something like that, four million dollars or whatever, uh, like four million a year, like with two guaranteed or something. Um, pretty good contract. I like it. Uh, contract nerds, help me out in the comment section. I threw my pen. Uh, c- uh, contract nerds, help me out in the uh, chat box and let me know exactly what his contract was. But the contract was cheap. We're not giving up too too much money to have him. So with that. He's in our Dallas system, right? This is kind of like a trial era, like a like a like a trial year for him. So if he can give us like a hundred tackles and three interceptions and seven pass deflections, if we can get that dude, because he's still relatively young, if we can get that dude at 27 years old, then let's give him another contract and let's keep him around for a little bit, right? But if not, he's a pretty good placeholder that's better than Jeff Heath, and he doesn't force you to do anything when you go into the draft. You see what I mean? So we basically kicking tires on Ha Ha LOL Clinton Dix just to kind of see what he's going to bring to the table. I think this could be an upside pick. This could be a placeholder. Regardless, I'm good with it because we do upgrade at the spot. Okay, we do upgrade at the spot. Um, Plus, we do have the upside to where we could be even better. And, um, you know, if it works in our system. Hey, man, the Mike McCarthy guys may have made the phone call if y'all, you know, if y'all uh, put your little thinking caps on and, you know, you know, um, um, you know, thought about that. So Mike McCarthy, this may have been one of his picks, one of his picks to bring his guy back. So if we can get him back in that Mike McCarthy system, whatever that's going to be, and he get back to 100 tackles and whatever. Then let's just hold on to him. I want to talk y'all ears off no more, man. Um, it's late, and I know some of y'all going to watch this late. Some of y'all going to watch this on, on your lunch break tomorrow. Some of y'all going to watch this like. March 30th or something, but whatever. Whenever you watch it, I appreciate y'all for watching. Hit the like button and follow me on Twitter, V-O-C-H-L-O-N-B-A-R-D-I. You got the Patreon stuff and all that. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Wolski and the Peace Kiwiski until our next free agent acquisition. Peace, y'all. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.